It's coming. It's coming from California and Washington, D.C. Is it killer bees? No. Is it a balanced budget amendment? No. Is it income tax relief? Hardly. It's coming to improve our air quality and to make diagnosing emission and drivability concerns easier. It's OBD2. Hey, pal! You may remember me from last year's OBD2 Pulsat telecast. I'm your friendly neighborhood control module. <laughs> I'm back to give all you GM dealership technicians the scoop on OBD2 diagnostics for 1995 GM vehicles. So sit back, relax, pay attention, and learn something. I'll catch you later. The current level of diagnostic sophistication found on GM vehicles has been gradually evolving since the advent of closed-loop controls and is referred to as Onboard Diagnostics 1, or OBD-1. OBD-1 has been in effect since 1988. This is about to change. The next level of automotive diagnostic technology is referred to as Onboard Diagnostics 2, or OBD-2. This enhanced diagnostic system will take effect gradually over a three-year period for General Motors from 1994 through 1996. And while OBD-1 was concerned primarily with drivability or engine performance, OBD-2 also monitors the vehicle's emission systems. OBD-2 regulations require onboard diagnosis of vehicle components and systems that can affect emissions. In some cases, this will require only recalibration of existing OBD-1 technology, but more often it will require development of entirely new diagnostic methods. OBD-2 will also make use of additional software and electronic sensors to monitor the vehicle's various emission control systems. The new systems to be monitored when OBD-2 is in full implementation include, but are not limited to, the EGR system, the secondary air injection system, the three-way catalyst, and the evaporative emission system. OBD-2 will offer more precise monitoring of short and long-term fuel trim and engine misfire diagnosis. OBD-2 requirements also include directives for measuring oxygen sensor performance. For the 1995 model year, two vehicle lines will receive full-function OBD-2 diagnostic systems. These vehicles are the Chevrolet S10 pickup and Blazer, equipped with a 4.3-liter L35 engine and a VCMA, and the GMC Sonoma pickup and Jimmy, equipped with a 4.3-liter engine and a VCMA. Planned for the 1995 and a half model year are the Chevrolet Cavalier and Pontiac Sunbird equipped with a 2.3 liter engine and an automatic transaxle and the Chevrolet Camaro and Pontiac Firebird equipped with 3.8 liter engines. By 1996, all light duty gasoline cars and trucks must be fully OBD2 emission system compliant. All OBD-2 vehicles will feature new five-character DTCs specified by OBD-2 regulations. Flash codes are no longer possible under OBD-2. These new codes will provide code uniformity across all automobile manufacturers' product lines. All new DTCs will consist of a four-digit numeric code preceded by a single-digit letter designator. Each designator will represent a different area of the vehicle. For example, in DTC P0125, P stands for powertrain. Zero means that it is a generic code used by all manufacturers. However, the number one in this position would designate a manufacturer-specific code. The third position in the code specifies a particular area of monitoring. In this case, one designates the fuel and air metering systems. The last two digits represent the actual diagnostic trouble code number. OBD2 regulations also require that all manufacturers' scan tool interfaces must be standardized using the 16-pin connector you see here. To handle the increased diagnostic capabilities of OBD-2, 
a new TechLine handheld diagnostic tool will be released in the 1996 model year, superseding the Tech 1. This new diagnostic tool meets SAE J1850 guidelines covering high-speed Class II serial data, which is the type of data stream utilized by GM OBD2 vehicles. The Class II digital data uses a pulse-modulated signal with ground as the reference voltage and a 7-volt signal corresponding to on in digital language. For more information on Class II serial data, refer to the reference book which accompanies this video. The new TechLine handheld diagnostic tool is the most powerful portable diagnostic tool ever produced. It far exceeds the Tech 1 in processing speed and is much easier to use as well. Until the new TechLine tool is available, the Tech 1 and Tech 1 Series A can be used to retrieve this new serial data information. To make OBD2 diagnosis possible with current Tech 1 units, GM Service Technology Group has developed an OBD2 Tech 1 application kit, part number 7000041. The OBD2 Tech 1 application kit makes it possible to connect current Tech 1 and Tech 1 Series A units to the OBD2 16 pin data link connectors and to read OBD2 Class 2 serial data. The OBD2 Tech 1 application kit must be used in conjunction with the Tech 1 to diagnose the 1995 model year vehicles with Class 2 serial data. The diagnostics used to process and compare all this information are amazingly complex. Consequently, the PCMs and VCMs used on future OBD2 equipped vehicles will have much greater data processing and memory storage capacity. And for 1995, the ST truck features an updated vehicle control module or VCM, which is referred to in service literature as a VCMA. Located in the engine compartment, the VCM consolidates several control modules which were formerly separate units, such as the ABS and powertrain control modules into a single component. GM OBD2 PCMs and VCMs incorporate specialized software referred to as the Diagnostic Executive. Every time the vehicle is driven, numerous vehicle systems must have several diagnostic tests run on them, some once per trip and some continuously. Most of these tests must also be performed only under specific operating conditions, such as engine coolant temperature, RPM, vehicle speed, throttle position, and so on. In addition, some diagnostic tests must fail more than once before the MIL is illuminated, and some will illuminate the MIL after only one fault occurrence. The responsibilities of the diagnostic executive include MIL illumination and extinguishing, DTC logging and clearing, freeze frame data for the first emission related DTC recorded, failure record recording, current status information on each diagnostic, and finally, inspection maintenance status. Inspection maintenance status refers to whether or not an emissions-related diagnostic test has been run. You can check the test status using the Tech 1. The inspection maintenance status will only tell you if a test has been run, not whether it passed or failed. The diagnostic executive reviews sensor inputs during each driving cycle to determine if the conditions required for each individual test have been met before it allows that test to be performed. The conditions required for a test to run are known in engineering jargon as enable criteria. You can think of the diagnostic executive kind of like an air traffic controller, as the functions each performs are similar. 
An air traffic controller is responsible for making sure that airplanes don't collide, that two planes don't try to land on the same runway at the same time, that takeoffs are staggered, and that two planes don't try to share the same airspace at the same time. The diagnostic executive keeps track of each diagnostic that needs to be run. It also will not initiate diagnostics which interfere with each other. For instance, the diagnostic executive will not initiate an oxygen sensor performance diagnostic when the EGR diagnostic is in progress, since the results would be corrupted by EGR diagnostic activity. The amount of data the diagnostic executive must process is truly mind-boggling, and it is much too complex a subject to cover in depth here. For more information on the OBD2 Diagnostic Executive, refer to the reference book which accompanies this video. OBD2 Diagnostic Trouble Codes can be cleared from the PCM or VCM's memory in three ways. Two manual and one automatic. But you should not clear codes unless directed to do so by the service information provided for each diagnostic procedure. One method to clear DTCs is by using a scan tool, such as the Tech 1 or Tech 1 Series A when used with a new application kit. Also, if battery voltage to the PCM or VCM is interrupted during another service procedure, all current DTC information may be lost. Finally, the PCM or VCM can clear DTCs all by itself. If the condition which caused the DTC to be stored has been corrected and the vehicle has experienced 40 warm-up cycles with no further faults, the stored DTC will be cleared automatically. Again, do not clear codes unless directed to do so by the service information provided for each diagnostic procedure. When DTCs are cleared, the freeze frame and failure records data stored in onboard memory that may help diagnose an intermittent fault will be erased from memory. What are freeze frame and failure records data, you ask? Freeze frame data is similar to the snapshot data that is available from the Tech 1. The major differences are that freeze frame data represents only an instant in time while snapshot data includes information recorded over several seconds, and that freeze frame information is stored only for emission-related DTCs that illuminate the MIL. Freeze frame data is recorded in memory at the instant an emission-related DTC illuminates the MIL. Freeze frame data reveals to the technician what many of the vehicle conditions were at the time the MIL was turned on. Knowing what the vehicle speed, engine speed, engine temperature, manifold absolute pressure, and many other vehicle conditions were at the time a fault was recorded can be an invaluable aid when diagnosing an intermittent problem. Additional OBD2 diagnostic information available is called failure records data. Failure records are a GM enhancement of OBD2 freeze frame requirements to aid technicians in vehicle diagnosis. While freeze frame records vehicle information only when the MIL is turned on, failure records data are recorded for any test failure reported to the diagnostic executive. Like freeze frame data, Failure records can be of great assistance in helping pinpoint intermittent drivability or emissions concerns. For more information on freeze frame and failure records, refer to the reference book which accompanies this video and to the service manual for any 1995 OBD2 vehicle. End part one. You should now prepare to take the first part of the test for this course. To take the test, you'll need a number two pencil and the official student attendance and test form in front of you. Make sure that the seven digits of the course number printed in block nine of the form match the seven digits of the course number printed on the course book and the videotape label. If you don't have the right materials, stop the video and get them. Start with the attendance and test form in front of you with a clipped corner in the lower right. For now, you'll be filling in the test answers only. At the end of this video, directions for filling out the rest of the form will be given. This is the only answer sheet you'll need for this course. In the upper left-hand corner, 
you'll see a series of circles under the letters A through E. In a moment, you'll see the first test question and several possible answers. When you've decided on an answer, completely fill in the circle under the letter that matches the letter of your answer. Since your test will be checked by computer, avoid making any stray marks on the form. If you change your mind, completely erase your old answer before marking your new answer. Also, it's important not to get dirt or grease on or to fold the answer sheet. Any of these conditions could cause the computer to incorrectly check your test. As you take this test, remember, there's no time limit. Feel free to stop the tape and take as much time as you need. You can also look in the course book and rewind the videotape to find an answer. Start marking your answers for test part one on line number one of the test form. Test part one. Question one. Two examples of engine systems which must be monitored by OBD2 are A. Oxygen sensor and fuel trim. B. Exhaust pressure and compression. C. Spark timing and detonation. D. Fuel pressure and injector balance. Question 2. Which will be OBD2 compliant in 1995? A. C and K trucks with the LB4 engine. B. Y cars with the LT1 engine. C. W cars with the L27 engine. D. S and T trucks with the L35 engine. Question 3. Freeze frame data is A. Stored for non-emissions related DTCs B. Only an instant in time C. Stored for all DTCs D. A record containing several seconds of time Question 4. Failure records are A. Several seconds of time B. Stored for any failure C. Five seconds in time D. Stored for emissions related DTCs only. Under OBD1 technology, the three way catalyst was not monitored in any way. The catalyst converts exhaust gas hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and oxides of nitrogen into water vapor carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas. OBD2 will monitor the effectiveness of the catalyst using a second oxygen sensor positioned after the catalyst in the exhaust system. This sensor is referred as HO2S2, which means heated oxygen sensor number two. The pre-catalyst sensor is referred to as HO2S1. With OBD2, the PCM or VCM compares the signal amplitude of the pre- and post-catalyst oxygen sensor voltages to determine the catalyst's efficiency. Under most driving conditions, there should be considerably less voltage fluctuation in the post-catalyst oxygen sensor signal than there is in the pre-catalyst sensor signal. This Tech 1 display shows what the oxygen sensor voltage readings should be in a properly functioning system. The PCM or VCM compares the voltage changes in each oxygen sensor reading. With a properly functioning catalyst at operating temperature, the HO2S2 should be far less active than HO2S1 because the catalyst stores and releases oxygen as needed to continuously convert pollutants into carbon dioxide and water vapor. This phenomenon is referred to as oxygen storage capacity. The PCM or VCM will monitor the two oxygen sensors and when it has determined that catalyst efficiency has degraded to 60% of its design specifications, the catalyst will be considered failed and a DTC will be stored in the PCM's or VCM's memory. The DTC which the PCM or VCM will store is P0420, which indicates that the catalyst's oxygen storage capacity is low. The service manual will instruct you to conduct several tests to determine if the low oxygen storage capacity condition actually exists or if the DTC is being set for some other reason. 
There are several conditions which can adversely affect a three-way catalyst itself and the accuracy of its monitoring system. These include exhaust system leaks forward of the second oxygen sensor, using fuel with a high sulfur content, engine misfiring, which subjects the catalyst to large amounts of oxygen, and high engine oil consumption. Technicians should keep these factors in mind when performing catalyst monitor diagnosis. DTC P0420 will be set only if the diagnostics enable criteria have been met and the PCM or VCM determines that there is excessive HO2S2 activity. OBD2 regulations also include directives for engine misfire detection. Engine misfire can occur for a number of reasons. It happens when there is incomplete combustion of the air-fuel mixture in one or more cylinders. Misfire results in loss of power and a rough running engine. It also results in much higher emission levels. OBD2 regulations require that engine misfire be detected to reduce emissions. Of course, an effective method for diagnosing drivability complaints caused by engine misfire will also improve GM customer satisfaction, as these complaints will be diagnosed and repaired more quickly than before. The PCM, or VCM, monitors two things to detect misfire. The camshaft position sensor and the crankshaft position sensor. The misfire diagnostic is based on the principle that crankshaft rotational velocity fluctuates slightly as each cylinder fires. There is an instantaneous increase in rotational speed during each piston's power stroke. As this slowed down animated example shows, when the crankshaft encounters a cylinder which is misfiring, that cylinder is not contributing any power to help the crankshaft rotate. The crankshaft's rotational velocity decreases slightly after what should be that cylinder's power stroke. Every 200 engine revolutions using input signals from the camshaft position sensor and the crankshaft position sensor, the PCM or VCM can determine precisely which cylinder is misfiring. For example, DTC P0300 indicates that a random engine misfire has occurred. Code P0301 indicates a misfire on the number one cylinder. Code P0302 indicates the number two cylinder has misfired, and so on. Misfire DTCs will set under the following conditions. Engine load is greater than in park or neutral. There is a positive torque situation and the vehicle is not decelerating. And proper voltage exists in the vehicle's electrical system. The throttle angle must be steady and the PCM or VCM must detect a variation in the crankshaft rotational speed. Of course, the conditions we're discussing here are general in nature. Refer to the service manual for the vehicle you're working on for specific information on all OBD2 diagnostics. When all the conditions are met, a code will set under one of the following scenarios. Immediately, if catalyst damage is occurring, or if emission standards have been exceeded by 50% the last two times the vehicle was driven. Misfire can also occur in non-consecutive trips under some conditions. For more information, refer to the reference book which accompanies this video. If it is determined that the misfire will result in potential catalyst damage, the PCM or VCM will flash the malfunction indicator lamp once per second for as long as the misfire is severe enough to damage the catalyst. When a misfire condition is suspected, the PCM or VCM may also disable the torque converter clutch or TCC on vehicles equipped with automatic transaxles or transmissions. Once the misfire condition has been corrected, or if the transmission temperature gets too high, the PCM or VCM will re-enable the torque converter clutch and disable the misfire diagnostic. 
One characteristic of misfire detection is that driving on rough roads can apply torque to the crankshaft, which can cause crankshaft speed fluctuations. In other words, rough road conditions could cause false misfire readings. Because of this fact, OBD2 has provisions for misfire detection to be disabled during rough road driving. On many vehicles equipped with anti-lock brakes, the VCM or PCM will monitor the ABS system to determine if rough road conditions are present. End part two. You should now prepare to take the next part of the test for this course. Remember, you can stop the tape to think about a question. You can also look in the course book and rewind the tape to find answers. Test part two. Begin this portion of the test at line number five of the test form. Question five. Three-way catalyst conversion efficiency is monitored by A. The pre and post catalyst oxygen sensors. B. A hydrocarbon sensor. C. MAP sensor rationality checks. D. An oxygen storage sensor. Question six. The catalyst efficiency diagnostic could be deceived by A. Low octane fuel. B. Excessive exhaust pressure. C. Exhaust leaks. D. Low fuel trim. Question seven. The MIL will flash continuously when A. Any misfire condition has been detected. B. Misfire is severe enough to damage the catalyst. C. Misfire was detected on two non-consecutive trips of similar engine speed load conditions. D. The misfire was detected on two consecutive trips of similar engine speed load conditions. Question 8. The two sensors which are used to detect misfire are A. The MAF and HO2S2 sensors B. The camshaft position and MAF sensors C. The camshaft and crankshaft position sensors D. The NOC and HO2S1 sensors OBD2 includes a diagnostic for monitoring the fuel trim system. This system diagnostic functions by comparing the average short and long-term fuel trim values to rich and lean thresholds. As in all closed-loop fuel injection systems, the PCM or VCM monitors the oxygen sensor signal voltage and adjusts the fuel trim accordingly. The microprocessor can determine whether the air-fuel mixture is rich or lean based on the oxygen content of the exhaust stream. Fuel trim is monitored over several cells to include those fuel trim cells which are used most. Typical ideal short and long-term fuel trim values are about 128. Depending on whether the mixture is rich or lean, the PCM or VCM will adjust that value up or down. However, should the short-term fuel trim rise above a certain number, such as 160, for example, and the long-term trim rise above a certain number for a period of time, such as 158, and all other engine functions are within normal operating parameters, DTC P0171 fuel trim lean will be stored. Should the opposite conditions occur, with short-term fuel trim below, say, 94, and long-term trim below about 100, DTC P0172 fuel trim rich will be stored. If this fault has been recorded on two consecutive drive cycles, that is, if the vehicle was driven on two separate occasions, reached normal operating temperature, and the fuel trim was measured outside normal operating parameters for a set period of time, DTC P0171 or P0172 will set. Like misfire detection, fuel trim faults can also occur in non-consecutive trips under some conditions. For more information, refer to the reference book which accompanies this video. The malfunction indicator lamp, or MIL, will illuminate and remain illuminated until the excessive rich or lean conditions have not been detected for three consecutive trips, 
and the engine speed, load, and temperature range are the same as when the fault was originally detected. After that, the PCM or VCM will extinguish the MIL itself. It should be noted that the fuel trim diagnostic is a system diagnostic. System diagnostics, such as the fuel trim algorithm, are sensitive to a particularly wide range of faults and variables. It is important to take into consideration all available information, such as other DTCs and engine conditions at the time the code was set, when troubleshooting a fuel trim code. Please note that on the Tech 1, fuel trim readings are given in counts, as shown here on the top, except when fuel trim data are stored in a failure record or in freeze frame. Failure records and freeze frame fuel trim data are displayed as a percentage, as shown here on the bottom. Refer to the fuel trim conversion chart in the reference book which accompanies this video to convert fuel trim counts to percentage or vice versa. One of the stipulations of OBD2 is that all emissions related input or output powertrain components be monitored not only for failure, as many are in OBD1, but also for degradation. For example, the oxygen sensor monitoring system is designed to monitor voltage and response rate of the pre-catalyst sensor, or HO2S1, monitor voltage or response rate of the post-catalyst sensor, or HO2S2, and monitor each sensor's heating system by measuring the time required for the sensor to become active after a cold start. By measuring the time to activity of each sensor after startup, the diagnostic can judge if the heater circuit of the sensor has passed or failed the test. If the heater circuit has failed, the time to activity of the oxygen sensor will noticeably increase. For the pre-catalyst oxygen sensor, the PCM or VCM runs a sensor diagnostic test which compares the sensor's response rate with that of a predetermined threshold to determine if the sensor is performing acceptably. Poor response times could be caused by either lead or silicon poisoning. The diagnostic monitors the voltage of both sensors for a fixed period of time and will indicate a fault if the voltage of either sensor remains outside the calibrated range. An oxygen sensor will be considered degraded when its voltage, response rate, or other parameters reach a level which causes the vehicle to exceed 1.5 times the federal test procedure emission standards for that vehicle. Let's take a moment to discuss the OBD2 drive cycle. The purpose of the OBD2 drive cycle is to run all vehicle onboard diagnostics so that inspection maintenance or IM ready flags or indicators will set. This is displayed on the Tech 1 as system status. Performing the OBD2 drive cycle will ensure that all of the enable criteria for every diagnostic check have been met and that all IM ready flags are set, indicating that onboard diagnosis is complete. This is particularly important in states that have or will have license plate or vehicle registration renewal linked to successfully passing emissions tests. Diagnostic checks performed by the diagnostic executive must have already been completed before all inspection maintenance flags are set. The OBD2 drive cycle basically puts the vehicle's diagnostic system through its paces so that all onboard diagnostic tests are run. Refer to the reference book which accompanies this video for more details on the OBD2 drive cycle. The accompanying reference book goes into more detail on many OBD2 issues than does this video. This self-study CPT is a prerequisite to an OBD Generation 2 classroom course, course number 16030.00, which will be delivered at GM training locations across the United States. You must complete the CPT course and pass all testing procedures before you'll be allowed to take the classroom course. 
Be sure to read the reference book in detail and complete the test forms. OBD2 will take some time to master, but in the long run, we'll all breathe a little easier. Our customers will get their cars and trucks serviced more efficiently and more thoroughly. And isn't that really what it's all about? Well, there you have it, pal. I'm here to remind you that once you understand the ins and outs of OBD2 diagnosis, it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Diagnosing emission and drivability problems, which we all know can sometimes be a real pain in the neck, will be much easier and faster under OBD2. So do yourself a favor. Go to the OBD2 classroom training. End part three. Before answering the last video test questions for this course, please complete the sections of the student attendance and test form which identify you and your dealership. If this part of the form is not filled out correctly, you and your dealership won't receive proper credit or certification for this course. Start by placing the form in front of you with a clipped corner in the upper right. In the upper left-hand corner, print your last name in block one. Only one letter goes in each box. Print your first and middle initial in block two. Print the name of your dealership in block three. Your dealership city in block four. And the official postal abbreviation for your dealership state in block five. Your social security number goes in block six. Enter your dealer code in the space provided. Put today's date in block eight. Back at block one, you'll see an alphabet under each letter of your name. Completely fill in the circle of the letter that matches the letter that you printed at the top of the column. Follow the same steps for your initials and for the digits of your social security number, the date, and your dealer code. You should now prepare to take the last part of the video test for this course. Remember, you can stop the tape to think about a question. You can also look in the course book and rewind the tape to find answers. Test part three. Begin this portion of the test at line number nine of the test form. Question nine. The OBD2 drive cycle allows A, the PCM VCM to reprogram the fuel trim system. B, the Tech 1 to read all stored DTCs. C, onboard diagnostic emission system tests to be run. D, the diagnostic executive to clear all stored DTCs. Question 10. The heated oxygen sensor diagnostic monitors, A, oxygen sensor heater current, B, oxygen sensor impedance, C, oxygen sensor heater temperature, D, oxygen sensor time to activity. You have now finished the video portion of the test for this course. The course book that goes with this videotape contains all of the video test questions, as well as additional questions that make up the final part of the test. Once you have completed all of the parts of the test, make a photocopy of the form for your records. After copying, put the original in the pre-addressed envelope. No postage is needed. Remember to answer the additional test questions in the course book before mailing your form to CPT headquarters. Good luck. To inquire about CPT test scores and to order additional copies of test materials, call 1-800-468-6657. Please have your dealer code and course number handy when you call.